Good afternoon, St. John Church family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Tonight is April 28, 2021. This is our Bible enrichment lesson. And tonight's lesson lesson will be stemming from will be stemming from the power to change your life. And this is the last power series. And um, tonight's lesson is the power to love. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. You can also find this um, particular scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43, 43 through 48. Before we begin, excuse let's... Me. Excuse me. Hello? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, Luke 6, 27 through 36. Okay, and then the other one? Um, it's also a reference scripture. It's the same passage of scripture, but it's also found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. But I, I was just kind of making that a reference, but I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody hear that? Okay, we'll give you a moment to find that. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. All right, let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for waking us this morning. We thank you for last night's laying down. We thank you for every good and perfect gift because we realize that it comes from you. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask right now that you would anoint each and every one that's on the line. Lord, I anoint them afresh, God, in the name of Jesus and make it known on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just right now, I just ask that you would move me out of self. Lord, help me to be your vessel on tonight, God. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Anything that's not right. you within me or anybody else that's not like you we ask you to remove it right now in the name of Jesus we bind your hands Satan anything that you think you're gonna do any any wicked or foul schemes that you think you're plotting we, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus we loose the peace and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the anointing to flow in the name of Jesus we thank you right now God for what you're gonna do and for what you've already done we thank you for our pastor may you continue to bless him Wherever he is on tonight, God, we just ask you to continue to anoint him afresh, strengthen him where he might be weak, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you continue to bless his family and his entire household, God, and everyone that's connected, our whole entire church family. We need you, God. We need you in the kingdom like never before, Lord. The kingdom needs you. So we thank you right now for the power of love on tonight that we will expound on, on the word, in the word. So we thank you, we love you, we honor you, and give you praise. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. The power to love. Luke chapter 6, verses 27, um, excuse me, through 36. And I'm going to read that on tonight. First, we're going to read that first, and that's from the NIV version. But to you who are listening... I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If, one, if someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is it that to, that to you? Even sinners, even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them. 
and lend to them without expecting to get anything back, then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Last week, we, we started a little bit on that and we were talking about mercy uh, and actually we we're talking about forgiveness and forgiveness and mercy are pretty much pretty much interchangeable because you have to be merciful merciful in in able in order to forgive so um let's go ahead and review review that on tonight tonight lesson this text was written in the context let's give a little bit of history of it this text was written in the context of the Jews despising the Romans because they oppressed God's people. The Jews despised the Romans because they oppressed God's people. See, something happened to them. But Jesus told the people to love these enemies, the, the Jews. Some stopped being Christians even because, because Jesus said to have affection or love for their enemies. This love is not a love to fall into. It takes conscious effort, meaning to act in your, their best interest. Pray for in your, your enemies, and, and this is what it means to do. Act in your enemies' best interest. Pray for them and think of ways to help them. Jesus asked us to follow an example that he himself is following by loving the whole world, even those that are, are in rebellion against God. And again, I'll note that this particular passage of scripture is also found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43, 43 through 48. But we are going to read Luke's account of the gospel. So let's put this particular uh, scripture in perspective. What is it saying to us today? What is this saying to us today? The power to love our enemies. It's saying the power to love our enemies. And how we should love them by being a hearer and a doer of the word. It stems from last week's message, the power to forgive. You must be able to forgive fully and genuinely love someone, especially someone that you know is your enemy. And even sometimes without a cause. Yes, some people walk around hating and they, they don't even know why. Some people have something within them that triggers hate and it is deeply rooted in past pain, suffering, or even abuse. But staying in that place, hold that person in a spiritual bondage, meaning you're not free through Christ Jesus. You're still carrying the sin of hate and unforgiveness. Now, there are things that we are to hate. And this is the kind of this is not this is in the connotation of sin. But this hate we speak on tonight leads to sin. So therefore, the need to look at practical ways using this text to truly love someone that, you know, does not love you back let's take a look so let's go back at verse 27 verse 27 begins with jesus stating to you to you who are listening meaning everyone that will listen to what the spirit has to say to the church we are not exempt from god's word and when we hear it we are obligated to put it into action because we have accepted christ as our savior and when he speaks it behooves us to listen Jesus goes ahead and says it straight, goes ahead and says it straightforward. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. First off, let's talk about what love is according to scripture and how we should reciprocate this type of love. If we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 5, we, it will be some of love, some of the characteristics of love will be explained. And I also want to, um, to share, let's see. Share what also what love is um, in the Greek. Agape means unconditional. Verse twenty-seven begins with Jesus stating to us, to who are meaning those who are listening, what the Spirit says to the church. Um, if we go back to first Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through five, it says, love is patient. Love is kind. 
It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no records of wrong or wrong of wrongs. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no records of wrongs. I thought we would read that again. Let's talk about that a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 5. Love is patient. We, we often hear that, that patience is a virtue, and it truly is. It, it, is, a, it is a virtue, and it's something that, that, we, that we move forward to as we move throughout our Christian journey. It's not something that we develop over time because when we are in our flesh and when we're in, our, in the carnality of our mind, we, we, des, we desire to, to do things in, in, uh, immediately, and we want things done right away. But love is patient. And we have to realize what the word says, too. God is love. And if God is love, that means God is patient. God is kind. And, it, and God does not envy. And, and if we are supposed to carry on his characteristics, uh, the characteristics, his char Christian, Christian characteristics, we have to take on what this love means. And we have to make, internalize it and make it, make it um for us, let's go back to uh, um, cross-reference this with our text on what this means to loving your enemy. Do good to those who hate you. So, in the in the context of doing good to those who hate you, you have to be patient. Um, it's it, a lot of times some people aren't going to like you just because you're you, or just because of 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 who you are or who you're in association with. But you have to be patient and you have to be kind. You still have to love that person. And it says also, bless those who curse you. Bless those. Proclaim blessings and not curses upon their lives. You, you want to see them do good. You're not smiling when they fall or on their faces, even though they're your enemy. Even though they're the opposite of friend, they're their enemy. You still have to make the choice, the conscious effort to love anyway. This is a command. Jesus is te teaching about loving enemies. This is what we're talking about. And so we, that means that we have the power within us to do it or he wouldn't have taught about it. But remember verse 27 also, but to you who are listening, to you who are listening, that's also saying to you that are concerned about my word, that you, that you are listening to my word and that you're not just hearing it, but you're, but you're going to also want to put it in action because right after that, it says, love your enemies. Do good to the it's, it's called is calling you to action. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Pray for those who mistreat you. How am I going to pray for somebody that constantly mistreats me or mis or, or abuses me or 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 takes me for granted? Do I stand there and continue to be a doormat? No, that's not what this text is saying. This text is saying you still pray for them. You don't wish anything negative on them because sometimes we say, well, Lord, we want them to get got right now because of the way they're treating me. No, it's not in for you to say that you have to be patient. You have to be kind and don't dishonor them. And and also remember what First Corinthians says, love is not self-seeking. We can't seek, seek to gratify our flesh and become easily angered and keep records of the wrongs that our enemies do to us. If you continue to keep records of wrongs, that means that you're not dwelling in love. So this is a part of love. This is the power. We have, we have the opportunity to take this word in and let it take root on fertile ground on tonight. And knowing that we don't need to keep record of wrongs. When you keep a record of something, that means that um, a lot of times, like, like in, the, in the world, uh, that keeping records of things, they, they, go, they go in files, people write things down, they, they keep records. I can give uh, working in a doctor's office as a, as a reference. Um, the way we keep records is that we keep them on um, a database within a computer system. And, and when we need those records, when a patient comes in, we access those records because it brings back to memory what they did 
um, what we talked about in the last um, office visit and, and, and we talked about their concerns and their action plan and, and what we're going to do. But so if you're keeping records of wrongs, that means you're pulling those files out of your out of your um, your mental psyche and you're, you're keeping a record of those things and you're re re being reminded of things that were said, things that were done. But according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 5, love does not keep a record of wrongs. So how do we stop keeping records of wrongs? How do we stop that? How do we stop that? Do we do that overnight? No, we don't. Because we don't forget things that happen to us. We don't forget because we have a memory. And a memory is a great thing. It's an awesome thing. But also a memory, a memory can be a hindrance if you allow it to be. So it's always in you, it, it, within you. It's, it's a free will. So, so it, it, it's, it's, an, it's an inward thing that, that you have a self-examination that, that you have to, have to um, take into consideration. It always protects. Love always protects. Protects means it, it, it covers always trust trust that means the walls have come down okay the walls have come down you don't have walls up anymore um not guard you're not guarding yourself so much as to not letting people in especially when they're genuine um always hopes always hopes always hopes for the best always hopes for the best and not the worst always perseveres keep fighting keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of a higher calling okay and love, love is not envious. It's not jealous. It's not boastful. It's not proud. It's not proud. It's, it's not, it's not um, conceited. That's what love is not. Uh, but, but love protects. Love, love is, is, is happy when someone, when someone goes above and they accelerate. Um, love love is, is, is in enjoying the successes of others, even, even if it's somebody that you don't care for too much. That's what this scripture is about. Jesus loves, says love, even if you know this person does not love you back. Teddy Pendergrass penned a song um, that I thought was, was interesting, worth coming up. Uh, it's, it's so, I, the words are something like this. Um, it, it's good to have somebody that loves you back. But, but what if that somebody don't love you back? So, you know, I flip it around. Uh, you know, I'm not taking anything away from his song. It's a nice song. But the thing is, what if somebody don't love you back? So, so what do you do? It is a good feeling when somebody loves you back. But, but what is the feeling that you decide to take hold of? What is the emotion that you decide to take hold of when somebody doesn't love you back? Okay, think about that. Think about that. And so we know, know and rely on God, on the love of God, the love God has for us. God is love. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4, 16 through 21. And I started reading some of that. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Who is he? God first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So you, so you might say, well, I thought you said love your enemies. Your brother and sister is, is your neighbor, okay? So, so don't try to twist that so you, so you can get out of that. That's not what that scripture is saying. That brother, yes, you should love your brother and sister uh, physically and spiritually, but also you have brothers and sisters in Christ and you have brothers and sisters out in the world and you have to love them. You, you, you are, ob we are obligated to love that, that is, that is a duty. This, this, that's a command. It's not just something 
that we just, you know, decide that we might may or may not do. This is something that we that we should do. And it's a command. These two passages of scripture are not all inclusive but gives us a glimpse of what love looks like and the power of what, how to love looks like and how the same love should be practiced in our lives. Yes, practice. Remember, this is a conscious effort that must be approached every single day. Um, sanctification is, and is, is every day. It's a, it's a, re, a sanctification and repentance. We do this daily. It's not something that we just do once and then just think, think we're all done. No, it's not. It's, it's going to take time. Yeah, yes, it will. This love takes you tearing down the walls within yourself and being free to love. Because just like the for, forgiveness, if you can't forgive yourself, if you can't forgive yourself, and if you don't, just, just in, and in reference to tonight, if you don't love yourself, you can't love someone else. You can't love someone else. So let's talk about hate. Hate is often brewed by the color of someone's skin, their nationality, as we see here in this text, and even their political or, or social status. But these things, because in this particular um, text, remember that um, the, 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 even the need or the necessity for this text or for the gospel being taught was because Jesus saw how the Jews was hating the Romans, pretty much having hate and 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 this this uh dishonoring them because of who they were and how they oppressed the jewish people but it was not their place to take that justice and that revenge on them because they're supposed to pray for them and still love them and that's why jesus wanted to share this with them and that's why we're using that as an example today and it's also shown in that text but these things most of these things that i've just mentioned are unchangeable until the one that hates or maybe even yourself choose to look on the person's characteristic and their spirit instead of the outside. And so, so instead of looking at, at the outside of someone, you start taking note of the inside characteristics. You take, um, the, the Bible said, know the spirit by the spirit, uh, test the spirit by the spirit. And you have to make sure that, that you're not just looking at the, the natural and the physical appearance, but you're seeing the spiritual as well. And, and seeing the good that can actually be in a person instead of the negative that you might have heard or the negative that you might have seen, just casting judgment based off of one incident you, you've been through with that person or, or just casting stones based off um, what a group might be saying about a person or even another group. We have to be very careful about that. You see, just standing on the outside looking in is not always the, the way things are until you really get to know someone for yourself and then you may see that you were actually, you might have been wrong. So um, let's go back to that. I, I do want to make a, a connotation in the wake of things that are going on. And a lot of times we can't judge, judge things based on what we see as far as the injustices that might be going on within our communities. But we have to make sure that we're not mis misinterpreting and misjudging and that we still show love no matter what, no matter what, we still show love. We can't, we can't be um, on one side or the other. We are Christians. We are Christian, and we, that with, with with God, there's neither black nor white. There's no, no neither Jew nor Gentile. Remember, there's neither bond nor free. Galatians speaks of that. So we have to realize and remember that we are Christians no matter what's going on around us. We see the things that are going on around us. And yes, there are times that we are called to action for the things that are going on around us. But God gives us the wisdom to use our abilities to make things right. Just like he did with Martin Luther King. He did, um, uh, he did some great things. Martin Luther King Jr. did and others did great things on the behalf of, of um, black our black community and we cannot they but they used wisdom when they did these things they didn't just approach it haphazardly okay so we have to be careful and be mindful about how we approach situations especially according to what this is saying because even if someone mistreats you it says or slap you or turn uh, it says turn the other one to him also that's not mean that you keep letting somebody slap you what it is saying though is not it's not it's more so spiritual than it is physical 
it is saying that it is what it is saying is when someone keeps doing something to you what did the bible say about forgiveness last week forgive 70 times 7 that's what that's what this connotation is saying forgive you don't keep putting yourself in the place for somebody to keep slapping you but you you still forgive them you still love them even if they did slap you and even if they happen to slap you again you still have to forgive them and still love them anyway you can't muster up hate and keep a record of the wrong remember that's the word okay so let's go to another reference to that uh romans chapter 12 verses 9 through 10. love must be sincere love must be sincere that means it must be genuine and true hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourselves honor others above yourself what does love being sincere mean love is is, is being sincere is being compassionate is is placing yourself um lower than others you know don't esteem yourself higher than others but you know put somebody else before yourself you know uh, that's sincerity hate what is evil hate what is evil again remember what we said about about hating and and jesus jesus tells us some things that we are to hate but he said hate what is evil okay anything that's not of god anything that's contradictory to the word of god is is, is evil and it's not it's not you know according to the word cling to what is good be devoted to one another in uh, in love devotion compassion hospitality honor another above yourselves there it is okay let's look at another verse in this text verse 29 and we're talking about luke luke chapter 6 verses 29 through 30 this text is founding upon someone taking something from you jesus said let them have it according to this text he said let them have it this tell this this is text is telling us to not take revenge for ourselves vengeance is the lord's romans 12 19 do not take revenge my dear friends but leave room for god's wrath it is mine it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord vengeance is not ours it's not on us to take take revenge so if somebody takes something somebody steals from you it's not it's not up to you to go to go back and try to try to get it back on your own that's what this word is saying okay it's not what this white saying it's what the word says it is better to let the lord fight your battles because when we miss mess in it we will make a mess we will make a mess when we mess we make a mess because oftentimes we act out of anger we act out of fear and emotions and we don't let the holy spirit guide us in our actions the bible says in proverbs for us to acknowledge god in all our ways and he's going to direct our path and i want to make sure that i read that that's not one of the ones that i that i had wrote down but i want to go to that let's go to um proverbs chapter 3 and starting at verse 5 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways even with the power to love in your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight do not be wise verse 7 do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and shun evil verse 8 this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones so let's go back and think about that so if we submit our ways if we submit our action of love to him it's going to bring health to us and nourishment to our bones it's going to bring health and nourishment to our very being and our spirit so we can function that's going to give us power health and nourishment goes hand in hand and health and nourishment gives you the power to love okay that gives us the power to love let's go to another reference psalm psalm 3 verse 7 god will smite our enemies we do not have to do it although we might want to we don't have to do it 
what does verse 7, Psalm 3 and 7 say? Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. This is David asking God to intervene when he was being come up against by, by a lot of his attackers and the wicked ones that would come up against him. Um, that's how we should do. We should, we should ask God to, to come quickly to our rescue um, and deliver us. Deliver me means deliver me so that I don't have to try to take anything in my hand. Deliver me. Sometimes you have to ask God right then and there to deliver you so that you won't act in a way that's not pleasing to him. And let him, it says, my God, strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth of the wicked, okay? Sometimes it is hard for us to see that we should walk away from the injustice. We have to, we have to trust God, but we have to trust God's timing and they will repay. We have to trust that they will repay and trust that God is working things out for our good. Nothing just happens to us by happenstance and nothing is allowed to happen us to us unless God allows it to happen. We have to remember that he, he keeps a hedge of protection around those that he loves. He encamps his angels around those that he loves and draw nigh to him. Remember the word says, as we draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to us. So he takes, a, he takes care of that. And he's a very ever present help, very present help in the time of our trouble. So he will repay. Vengeance is his. Sometimes we might even see, see it. We might even see the revenge. We might see the vengeance, but it's not for us to gloat or to be conceited, but to see that justice is prevailed when we wait on Jesus. Remember what Psalm 23 and 5 says. He will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies, but he prepares the table, not you, not us, not ourselves. He, we don't prepare the table, but he prepares the table. We must do good to people even when they are not good to us. Love people, love others, even though they do not love us back. Because according to our foundational text, Luke chapter 6, verse 20, verses 27 through 37, According to our found 36, I'm sorry, 36, according to our foundational text, we must do good. We must love them. And it does not profit us anything just to love those who love us. We have to love those that don't even love us back. <sighs> That's a lot. It's hard to love somebody when you know they don't love back. It's hard because that's how we're built. We're built to, to show emotion. We're built to show affection. That's how humans are built. We're, we're, we're supposed to love. We're supposed to embrace. We're supposed to have, have, have feelings. That's why it's so impertinent for the church of God. That's why he said, but to you who are listening, that's why it's so per pertinent and, and that you're aware of what the spirit is saying to the church. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their hateful, turn from their evil and unjust and wicked ways. Then he said he will heal from heaven, forgive their sins and heal the land. Okay. Then he hears us. Okay. Even in the midst of the power to love. Okay. Let's talk, let's go to a, um, a old Testament scripture. I want to talk about that because we're going to um, talk about, and if you're saying that I'm not going um, by each and every one, we're kind of summarizing this, this text on tonight. So I might be kind of skipping around to different, different areas because th that's, um, I just want to pull out the, the ones that we could definitely apply to, to the power to love. It's not that we're trying to mis misquote or misinterpret text or exclude text. But we read it in its entirety, but it, it is summarized in mostly of everything that we are speaking of on tonight. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. However, of those... I'm sorry, not Deuteronomy 14, Deuteronomy 15, 
Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 7 through 11. This, this talks about, um, the in reference to, um, if we'll look at what Luke says about, about lending and, and giving, this talks about that. Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full, but love your enemies. It says that again, do good to them and lend to them without expecting anything back. So let's talk about that. Let's let's talk about lending and giving and giving without expecting anything in return. Because a lot of times we often lend and say, well, I, I lent you this money, especially with family. I lent you this money. When are you going to pay it back? We can't we can't always think that somebody's going to always give it back to us, whatever we have lent or whatever we have given. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 7 through 11. And I'm going to read that from the NIV version. If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land, the Lord your God is given to you. Do not be hard hearted or tight fisted toward them. Rather be open handed and freely lend them whatever they need. Be careful not to harbor the harbor this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year for canceling debts is near, so so that you do not show it show ill will toward the needy among your fellow Israelites and give them nothing. They may then appeal to the Lord against you, and you will be found guilty of sin. Give generously to them and do so without a grudging heart. Then though then because of this the Lord God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. Well, I thought you just said this was to to those um, to them that do not. I thought you were just talking about your enemies. Um, I'm talking about your enemies and those that that are of the household of faith. When you give, period, to whoever you give to, the Bible tells us to do it with a cheerful heart anyway. But, you know, <clears throat> let's go back to, to what Luke is talking about. Even sinners lend to sinners. That's giving us that example. So as we lend, as we give, we're not supposed to expect anything back out of what we've given because we are supposed to have given from our heart. We're supposed to be charitable and compassion, compassionate towards other others. Let's go back to 15 Deuteronomy 15, seven through 11. I'm sorry, seven through, well, let's see, was it 11? Yes, seven through 11. Thank you. Seven through 11. So as we talk about that, let me give you, let's talk about an example um, you see someone, you know, sometimes we see those that are, um, on the street corner and, or, or they, sometimes they stand in the median and they, re, they're, they're asking for donations and, and they're asking <clears throat> for things and, and you are, and you are led to give. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's you, when you're led to give, you're giving and you're not expecting you're not expecting anything. You're not doing it grudgingly. You're not saying, well, I'm going to give because they, 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 they right here in my face and I got to feel like I got to give. That's giving with a grudging heart. So, so that's not a way to, to give. But the giving that I'm talking about is, or, or lending, giving or lending is, or if your, your neighbor that you know don't like you or the, your neighbor that, that you, that you ha are still working on, you're work in progress, um, you uh you know you know that you all really aren't bonded you're really not connected you might just not plain not like each other and it's not that you hate them or they're your enemy but you know they come over and they ask for a cup of flour are you going to say well i remember the other week i heard you were talking about me and you know i i just don't have any flour well first of all you've already messed up because you lied but and then the second the second thing is is that you're harboring and you're keeping a record of wrong so that way you're not letting love dwell in your heart. So this is what it's saying, you know, you guys, we have to learn how to love and not to use excuses 
and 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 just be real with, and be genuine with people and and freely give and giving is not always monetarily but giving it can be of your time we talk about this a lot giving can also be of your time um uh your 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 resources things that you have things that you are willing to to lend to people um if it's your lawnmower and you want to to lend that to someone you lend that to them but and not and and just pray that they graciously give it back to you the way that you lent it out but you know just give with a generous heart and even if it does not come back to you that way you still don't keep a record of wrong you still don't you still don't um harbor things and you know we're gonna have the needy uh, this this text in deuteronomy is talking about how the needy is is among you and yes it's a part of the law and it's a part of commands that were given under the the law but also this is can be set in an example because remember all all scripture is used for the ed, for our edification and, and the upbuilding of the kingdom so we have to realize and recognize that that this can be used in our way today it tells us not to be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them so um now there are things that we do remember i said you make sure you're using discernment when you do give now if you know that this person if you know this person and this person is getting ready to have told you to um that they what they were going to use it for they were honest with you and they told you that they were going to go buy something that would be detrimental to their health and you say no that's showing love that's not showing hate and that's not showing um judgment that's showing love and wisdom because you realize what what in, intoxication can do to a person you realize what what can be done with their body a lot of times we say well you know we we don't care what they do with it as long as we gave it but if you know what they did it for and you have to go a little deeper and search your heart and use wisdom that's a part of using wisdom and if you know better if you know what things do do to people and you know that 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 cigarettes call lung cause lung cancer are you going to give somebody to continue with the cause we have to think think about those things and we've been taught so some things so much so long until we think things are right and actually we have to have, look at it in a, di in a different light, in a different perspective, because that's not helping further that person. To me, to me now, that's, I guess it's my opinion. To me, that's making the person do something that be detrimental to their health in the long run. That's the way I see that, and that's the way I look at that. And I believe that's what this text is telling us as well. We have to be careful what we do as far as our lending, as far as when we're looking back at Luke as far as our lending some to someone um and without a grudging heart and it says the Lord will bless you in everything you put your hand to we don't look for anything from anybody else except the blessings and the favor of God we look for his blessings and we look for his favor and we look for him to be proud of us if nobody else pats us on the back if nobody else gives us praise we look for his we look for him we do that is something that we do look for we do look for his pat on the back and we do look for being in his perfect will because we do not want to be in a permissive will but we want to be in his perfect per perfect will we talked about that a few bible studies ago so let's see let's talk about being the power to be charitable and compassionate in 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 the context of love in colossians chapter 3 verse 14 verse i'm sorry verses 12 through 14 and i'm reading out of the niv therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and there's patience again and patience bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone forgive as the lord forgave you yes uh, forgiveness is a part of love why because this last verse says that and over all these verse virtues put on love over everything else put on love put on god god is love which binds them all together in perfect unity 
God brings together everything that we need, everything that we desire, everything that we try to clothe ourselves with, with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which are also a part of the fruit of the spirit. He binds those together so we can walk in these, in these attributes and he holds them in perfect unity when we when we work in harmony with it. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. That's why we have the Comforter. That's Comforter. That's why he left the Comforter, comforter with us to lead us and guide us into all truth so that we won't make decisions based on our flesh. We won't love people predicated on how they look and their social status or even their even their life lifestyle we we have to love people anyway whether they're whether whatever their 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 preference is we still have to love people because it's not for us to judge and if you um look at the next set of texts that's what actually goes on after after telling us to love it tells us jesus starts teaching and commanding the commandment about judgment about judgment so um if you want to continue that Pop the ask God to the the next lesson. If I would have taught a lesson about the power, would be the power of not to have how not to judge and be judgmental. Can we judge situations? Yes, we can judge situations, but we don't have the power to condemn or convict anybody. We don't have the power to do that. We are chosen by God because He so loved the world and gave His only Son for us. So we must honor Him in the love we show they will know that we are christians by the love we show uh, how we show our love and that that's um a very a very uh familiar connotation how we show the love how we just like that this text says how we do to others as that we should do unto others as we have them do unto to you, do unto others as you have them do unto you. That's a part of the golden rule. And that's a part of knowing that we are Christians by the love that we show, by the love we show and not just showing others, but those that, that we know are our enemies, those that, that might not agree with us or those that are not in our social circles or, 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 or they might not be in our denomination, but we love them. We love them. Remember, there's no no Greek, no Jew, no Gentile, no bond or free. There's no black, no white with him. We are all children of God. We are we were chosen by him. Why we we know that we're chosen? Because I'll say it again. He so loved the world. He so loved the world, not just certain people. He just, he so loved the world and a very good psalm i love i love love the psalm psalm 24 the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it the earth is the lord's and everything in it what does it have to do for love? what does that have to do with love because god so loved the world the earth is the world and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. That means he loved everybody that that lived in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Okay. They will receive, verse 5, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. He vindicates us. He comes to our rescue. He 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 gets the revenge for us. He he seeks our our um he vindicates us for us. He's our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. And he goes, he goes on, on our behalf every single day as we repent and, and we realize that we, 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 have, we are flawed and we're not perfect. He covers our sins and makes us perfect before God because of the blood. All right? Because of the blood of Jesus, he looks on us and knows and sees no sin. He sees us as forgiven. He sees us as cleansed. So we have to have mercy. We have to show mercy. And we have to love just as Christ has told us to love. Um, I want us to go to our final, our final um, scripture we have on tonight. We have been commanded to love. John 13, 34. So now I, this is the New Living Translation. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. 
you should love each other. Just as Christ has loved us, we are supposed to love each other. Love each other. A lot of people think that that's just your brother and sister in Christ. No, we're supposed to love those that don't love us. That's a part of the reason why he had to expound on that because I believe the Jewish people were getting that little twisted and they were feeling like, okay, well, if you're not Jewish, we don't have to love you. We don't have to, we don't have to, um, we don't have to associate with you. Not so, not so. We have to associate with those, even again, even those that are our enemies, even those that are, who have, who hate us. If we think, go back to, to scripture, we think about Judas. You didn't, you know, Jesus knew that Judas betrayed him, but you don't see in scripture where, where Jesus really kept a record of his wrongs and he didn't even really condemn Judas. You really never saw him condemn Judas. Okay. You, you saw, you, you saw him say, uh, you know, that what you do, you do quickly and, you know, and betray he, that, that he was betrayed with a kiss, but Jesus didn't say, Hey, look, why are you kissing me? I know you betraying me. You know, he did, he didn't bring that to the forefront. And that's, that's what I'm trying to also show us in this, in this lesson tonight. We, we can't say, well, you know, why are you hugging me? You, you know, you don't like me or, or why you, why are you doing this? Or why are you doing that for me? If you know, you don't like me. Um, a lot of times we say, well, you know, you, you love a person and you love them until, until you heap a hot coals on them. But if we go back to study the actual text, the actual text and context was talking about how the Hebrew people would get together. And if they, they lost coal, that they would give coal to, and I'm paraphrasing that and I'm fast tracking that they would give coal to even those that they didn't know or those that they didn't, they didn't even like, or those who were not even of their nationality. And you can go back and reference, reference that, that later, but that's what that context is saying. It's not that, that you're saying that you're going to give your, your enemy so much that you heap hot coals on them or that you're going to bring some type of judgment or justice on them. That's not what that scripture is saying. And that's, that, that's been taken out of context for years. And that's not what that meant. So as we get ready to conclude tonight's lesson, the power series, we're concluding the power series. Tonight was concerning love. We have the power to love and reciprocate that love. Even if it's not wanted, even if the love is not wanted, we have the power to reciprocate it because we have to give an account of our actions. We have to give an account of what we do. And if we we'll also look at that, we can go back to, to this and say, and, and, um, Jesus says that your reward will be great and you will be children of the most high because he is un because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. We get our reward in heaven. Remember, he, because he is merciful, we are supposed to be merciful. Because he loves, we are supposed to love. We have to he truly hear what the spirit is saying to the church. We have to open ourselves up and hear what the spirit says to the church. Is that compromising or, 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 you know, or, 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 or doing what your enemy think is right just to gain them over? No, that's not what this text was about. No, it's not about compromising. It's not about, it's not about that, but it is, it, it's all about loving them, loving them to the point where they'll have to take a self-examination to, for themselves. Loving, letting your light so, so shine that men and women, even your enemies, will see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. It's all about his glory and it's all about his praise and it's all about him getting the glory out of everything that we do and everything that we say. We have the power within us to love because we have the greater one on the inside, Okay. And it keeps us in right standing with God when we, when the, through the power of Jesus Christ, when we love greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. We have that greatness. We have that power. So the next time you see an injustice or hear about an injustice or, or you're even a part of an injustice or you see hate and, and, and want to take matters in your own hands, 
There are right ways, again, like we talked about earlier, to confront the situation, but we must trust God. Go back to what we talked about in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. We have to trust him and let him direct our path. God is our vindicator and realize his justice is so much better than what we can do. Why? Because he gives us the strength to do everything, everything that we need to do. We have the power to love, but he is the one who guides us and gives us that power to love. This lesson on tonight was, was uh, it was good to me. <laughs> I enjoyed this lesson. Um, the power to love. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to, through 36. I challenge each and every one of you to go back and study and study and study this lesson. And take it in for what it is. A lot of times we say, it is so hard to love somebody that don't love me back. It is so hard. And it is. It is hard. I can tell you it is. But we have to make up in our minds. Make the conscious effort to do good. And and and, and take baby steps with things. You know, take take small steps with things. If you know that you're you're in the presence of somebody that doesn't really like you, or, or, or they, they have even expressed that they don't like you. Try to be nice to them or, or don't, don't be fake about it or phony about it or hypocritical about it. But just try something. Look at something, a good attribute, because everybody has a good attribute. I don't care who they are. Everybody has a good attribute. If it's, if it's the way they're wearing their hair, tell them it's nice. Tell them it's nice. Tell them their hair is nice. Tell them, tell them they look good. Okay, you know, we have to we have to make the effort. We have to to make the conscious effort on on how we decide whether we're going to do something or or not or or we're going to love or not. Um I want to, I do have a short story that I wanted to um to leave with us on tonight. And I got this from website redeemedingod.com. And this is a little practical lesson. This is actually a good one. A man was seen one day going in a boat on a river with a large dog, which he wished to get rid of by drowning. He succeeded in throwing the animal into the water, but the dog kept trying to get back into the boat. As the man was attempting to beat the dog from the boat, he fell overboard. Witnesses say that the man would have himself drowned if the dog had not seized him by his coat and brought him to shore. The moral of this, when someone tries to do you harm, do them good in return. As Paul writes in Romans 12, do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. What if that dog, we're using that. What if that dog would have said, said to himself, well, this man done tried to drown me and push me overboard and he hates me. Why would I save him? And why would, why, why would he have the right to save him? Because he has love and he has compassion. And we're talking about an animal here, but let's talk about us. Let's put ourselves in, that sho in the shoes. How many times have we tried to get rid of somebody or get rid of somebody being in our presence because we don't like them? But then they came to our rescue and aided us, even when we knew we weren't even deserving. That's what Jesus did for us on the cross. He knew that we were not, we, we were guilty of sin, but he showed us mercy. And by his stripes, we are healed. So we do have the power to love. Oh, let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this lesson on tonight. We thank you for bringing us to your lesson on tonight. We just ask right now that something was said that would prick all of our hearts to give us the power to love and, and come closer to those that, that, we, that, we, that don't even love us back. And even those that do love us, help us to build better relationships. Help us to take self examination and make sure that we're looking at ourselves and not looking at anybody else though but we're looking at ourselves we're watering our own garden so that we're able to help somebody in their garden when it's needed that we're able to help them effectively so we thank you god 
We thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for transparency and we thank you for truth, the truth of your gospel. We thank you for the anointing power of the Holy Ghost for resting and ruling within us on this night. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there's anybody who's watching that needs healing or deliverance, that needs help in the area of love, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that your anointing be released so they will have the power and the strength to love because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God is love. So we thank you for your agape love. We thank you for showing us that unconditional love and that unconditional favor with those that don't even love us. Thank you for your teaching. Oh, we thank you right now for your teaching to help us to understand your word even the more. Lord, we thank you right now for each and every one on the line. Lord, if anybody stands sick in their body or in their spirit, God, we ask for healing because you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the healer. You are Je you, you are just Jehovah God. You are El El Elohim. You are El Shaddai. We thank you. You are all of those in one and we glorify and we honor you for who you are. We bless your holy and your righteous name. We know who you are. Because you give us the strength. The joy of the Lord is uh, our strength. We thank you. This is the day you have made, Lord, and we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we continue to lift up our pastor and fellow ministers, Lord. We just ask right now that you keep all of their hands to the plow and not looking back because they are truly fit for the kingdom. So we thank you right now for stability in their mind and in their spirit, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that they stay the course and continue to press towards the mark of the prize of the higher calling. We thank you not just for ministers and pastors, but we thank you for that, for even those in your Christendom and even those that don't even love us. We thank you right now. We pray for our enemies on tonight because the, we learned tonight again that the Bible tells us, even if we already knew it, we ser it serves as a reminder that we are to pray for our enemies. So pray, we're praying for our enemies right now in the name of Jesus, that hearts of stone will be turned into hearts of flesh, that they, that they might see good and not evil. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your protection. And we realize that vengeance is yours and it is not ours. So we thank you for your covering. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our entire lives, our households and our families. We continue to pray for this nation, God. We need you like never before in this nation. There's so much injustice and so much insensitivity. There's so much negativity and so much things, so many things going on around us. But God, you told us in your word that you are very, very present help in the time of trouble. So we're going to walk by faith and not by sight, not by what it looks like. We are going to trust in the Lord until we die. So we thank you. Oh, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to be wise and use wisdom as we speak, God, because we know that we are the salt of the earth and we don't want to lose our savor, but, but help us to, to dress our words and be anointed when we speak, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now for the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, this rest ruling and abiding in our lives. We thank you, God, and we ask you continue to bless and anoint each and every one that came on the phone line. And even watching live, God, we thank you right now that they're anointed throughout the rest of this week and out throughout the rest of this day, God. We thank you, we glorify you, and we give you praise for you are truly worthy to be praised for us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You all have a blessed and blessed rest of you y'all's day. And like our pastor always says, love is the better way we talked about that so we have the power to live the better way you all have a good night be blessed now bye bye